Morning guys, today I am in the Buffalo Valley of Tennessee at a rest stop and I am headed west on some short notice. Left uh, North Carolina yesterday just before six o'clock and um, I'm heading to uh, Oklahoma today. So. This will be a fun drive. I should be in Oklahoma before uh, before I have to sleep again. Well, hopefully, I don't know. I might get tired on the road, but it's in the, uh, in the mid 30s here this morning. It'll be a little colder when I get to Oklahoma, I think. Anyway, I'll bring you guys along for the ride as usual. get up. Today I'm in Pahuska, Oklahoma, which is the Osage Nation, and I, uh, I stayed at the historic Whiting Hotel last night. I needed to stay close to this area, and there, there just weren't a lot of options to, to camp out this time of year, and I was getting in light, and I didn't know where I was. So um, anyway, I came out here. I'm going to be meeting up with Senator Troy Heinert from South Dakota. He is a state senator. He spent his entire night driving about a thousand miles um, from South Dakota to Oklahoma, dropping off bison at, at different tribes. He had a, a, a bison family he dropped off somewhere. Uh, several other tribes may have just gotten, you know, two cows or two bulls. Um, the bulls that he has coming here, I hear one of them's a, a pretty big one and he's a bit of a problem child. So it should be fairly interesting, but um, Yellowstone has to do something with their uh, population of bison each year. You probably, if you pay attention to the news, um, there was a truck that struck uh, 13 bison west of Yellowstone outside of the park that had migrated out of the park. Um, it was a shame. It was, you know, it was, you, you see that stuff on Yellowstone when you're watching the show, but it, it's real it happens. So um, what they do is they take some of the extra bison and they send them out to the tribes who are trying to build their own bison herds. Um, and that's what we're going to be filming this morning. So this is my first time out here, and it's, I think it's Troy's as well. So uh, it should be fairly interesting. We don't know what we're, what we're getting into, but it's a pretty cool reservation. The, the town here is very boutique-y. Um, kind of surprised me, but I guess Osage Nation at one point in time was one of the 
the wealthiest uh, tribes in the nation. There's actually a movie coming out this year with Leonardo DiCaprio um, about the Osage Nation and uh, some of the things that went on here that were, um, well, rather, rather despicable. But um, so this this is a place that you'll you'll probably hear a lot about in the uh, the coming months as Leonardo's movie comes out. fails it's always cold and windy when we're filming I'll tell you what cold and windy I think those cows think I'm gonna feed them you're gonna be very disappointed with me so just wait here I'm Troy Heinert. I'm a Sichangu Lakota from the Rosebud Reservation, and I'm the executive director of the Intertribal Buffalo Council located in Rapid City, South Dakota. So our goal and mission for the last 30 years has been to restore buffalo back to tribal lands for that spiritual and cultural connection uh, that those tribes have with buffalo. I can do some deciphering. This is probably about my uh, 12th year uh, working in, in buffalo restoration, though I've helped, uh, you know, other buffalo ranchers, you know, growing up for years. Um, but, you know, I, I ran the, the surplus program or the transportation program for ITBC for many years before I became executive director. And so I've, I've driven lots of miles and hauled lots of buffalo and, you know, been in the cold and the heat and if everything else. Um, you know, trying to get the, them loaded safely and, and to a new home. Hey, Troy! Hey, Troy! Yeah? He's watching me stick your head. Okay. Well, he was. I think it's 24. Yeah, 
Uh, it's 24 then. All right, we'll leave him alone. 24 and 10. We run numerous programs. We provide technical services to tribes to help their uh, uh, buffalo programs. Uh, we do what's called the Herd Development Grant, which we're a pass-through organization to provide resources for tribes. Uh, we also run a surplus program where we take surplus buffalo from federal parks, uh, other herds, private uh, donors, NGOs, and redistribute them to tribes. Uh, we also handle all the transportation for those buffalo. And then we also work on uh, getting live buffalo out of Yellowstone. When you arrive at a tribe and for the first time and you see the elders of that tribe um, come out and, and watch those buffalo unload and as they stand there and they, they grunt and they kind of try to decide you know where I'm where they're at um, and the looks on those elders faces uh, that's that's pretty heavy and that's my favorite part. So Buffalo really walk in two worlds. You know, there's the commercial aspect of Buffalo. And then on the tribal side, you know, there's the, the cultural aspect, which, you know, you go to many tribes across the country and they're referred to as a relative. You know, they have their own name, uh, they have their own songs, they have their own ceremonies. Uh, when, we're, when we're together with commercial producers, you know, the conversation always is, you know, how can we support you? How can you support us without stepping on each other's toes? Because I think, uh, you know, both endeavors are, are worthy and we need to work together, you know, to honor this animal. So right now we are in um, Benita, Oklahoma. So we have uh, been on the road for about an hour and a half, and we're going to see this herd that is uh, a herd from the USDA. I'm hoping we can get there before the sun goes down because we're getting a little tight on light here, but um, we'll see what kind of shots we can get here. 
and then from here I'll be making the thousand mile trek all the way back to North Carolina. So are these uh, from a state herd or? Uh, they're from a, a TNC herd. Okay. So uh, we did a, a partnership with the with TNC, um, and we've gotten some animals uh, from them uh, before, but uh, this year, or they made a, a two-year commitment of at least 750 animals each year. And uh, uh, this herd is is in Oklahoma, and we didn't we didn't have a really good idea of what to do with the calves, and because uh, we weren't very comfortable, you know, releasing releasing calves uh, to to tribal herds, and you know they needed to uh, they needed to go as well, so. That's when we come up with the idea of the study and then approach the USDA and APHIS and some other organizations saying, hey, what do you guys think about this? We have this opportunity right now that doesn't come along very often to have you know, wild buffalo that uh, come from a herd that's not infected. You know, usually it's always too late because you're getting an infected herd or you know, you, it, the animals would be coming from an uh, uh, active infection yeah and where this is you know the the parents uh, of these uh, of these calves uh, would have been around the infection but um, you know so far these have but we don't know if they're immune we don't know we don't really know anything about it or how it affects you know yeah and will they all of, do they carry it and then all of a sudden going to develop it we don't know and that's going to be very beneficial to find that out yeah now they seem a lot calmer uh, growing up on our reservation, you know, my dad was was very knowledgeable about our culture, and uh, we always knew that that buffalo played an important role, um, just as horses did uh, to tribal people, and you know that was always instilled in me as a as a young kid growing up. And every time I look at one, I, I know that their ancestors provided for my ancestors, and uh, it reminds me to be resilient, um, to never give up, and. You know, always uh, be strong.